Hello everyone, welcome back. In continuation with the staining techniques, today I am going to talk about one of the differential staining technique that is Jimsa staining. It is a type of Romanowski stain. Here it is so called as Jimsa staining technique. Why? Because in this staining technique we are going to use a special dye that was created by a German chemist Gustav Jimsa. And this staining technique was primarily used for the identification of plasmodium which is a malarial parasite. So we all know the causative agent of malaria that is caused by a plasmodium and there are different strains like plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium malaria, plasmodium oval, plasmodium vivax right. So this plasmodium which is a malarial parasite can be easily identified with the help of this Jimsa staining technique. And moreover, this staining technique has several other applications in the field of microbiology and also in the field of pathology. Hope you are clear. So by using this differential staining technique, it is possible to identify the malarial parasite in the blood smears. Along with that application, it is also used to differentiate the white blood cells count. Moreover, this staining method is also used to differentiate different blood cells like WBC as I told you which stands for white blood cells. It is also used to differentiate red blood cells and moreover platelets. And this staining technique is occasionally used for the detection of bacterial capsules. With the help of this Jimsa staining technique, it is possible to stain inclusion bodies. Generally, these inclusion bodies are present within the cytoplasm of a bacteria. And moreover, these inclusion bodies serves as a reserving materials, right? So, I will discuss about this inclusion bodies in detail when we talk about the ultrastructure of bacteria. As I told you just now that with the help of this staining method, it is possible to identify the inclusion bodies, right? So, those inclusion bodies which are present in the strains of Chlamydia trachomatis and in the Borrelia species can be easily determined with the help of this technique. This Jimsa staining method is also used to stain the species of Histoplasma capsulatum, Pneumocystis gyrovesi, Klebsiella granulomatis and occasionally some bacterial capsules. And one of the important application of this Jimsa staining method is, it is also used in the field of cytogenetics where it is possible to stain chromosomes and then observe the chromosomal aberrations. Coming to the principle of Jimsa staining, as I already mentioned you that it is a differential staining method and the stain which is used in this Jimsa staining method contains a mixture of azure, methylene blue and eosin dye. As you all know, this methylene blue is a basic dye whereas azure and eosin are the acidic dyes. Clear? So what is the role of this acidic dyes? They are going to stain the basic components of the cell, right? Whereas the basic dye is going to stain the acidic components of the cell. Along with these three components which are present in this Jimsa stain, we are also going to use an organic solvent called methanol which acts as a fixative and moreover it is going to stain the cellular components. I will tell you how to prepare this dye but remember that this dye is composed of azure, methylene blue and also eosin dye. So there is a combination of both the acidic and the basic dye and moreover here we are using methanol as a fixative. So what is the role of fixative? Here the methanol is going to fix the cells. That means the cells will be adhered onto the glass slide. 
once the cells are fixed onto the glass slide then this methanol which acts as a fixator doesn't allow any further changes in the cell so here what exactly happens is the stain which we are using here is more specific towards the phosphate groups of dna and it will attach itself to the regions where there are high amount of adenine and thymine bonding we all know that there will be purines and pyrimidines that are present within the dna and we all know that adenine always pairs with thymine and guanine always pairs with the cytosine right so this stain is more specific towards the phosphate groups of dna and it is going to bind at the regions where there are high amount of this adenine and thymine bonding and as i told you just now that it contains a combination of this both acidic and the basic dye these acidic dyes azure and eosin are going to stain the basic components of the cell that is nothing but the cytoplasm whereas the basic dye that is methylene blue will stain the acidic components of the cell especially nucleus of the cell hope you are clear with the role of each ingredient that we use for the preparation of the dye now let us see how to prepare this dye coming to the preparation of the dye either you can buy commercially or you can prepare this dye in the laboratory and it is composed of jimsa powder which is of about 7.6 grams per liter glycerol 500 ml and methanol 500 ml so 500 500 together makes 1000 ml so for 1 liter you are going to add 7.6 grams of jimsa powder so this jimsa powder is composed of azure eosin and also methylene blue and here the role of methanol is it acts as a fixator clear coming to the preparation of this dye first what you are supposed to do is weigh the required amount of jimsa powder stain how much you are supposed to weigh you need to weigh 7.6 grams of jimsa powder right so once you are ready with the jimsa powder now we are going to add this powder into a clean dry bottle so make sure you use clean dry bottle only so most of us what we do is before we go with the preparation of reagents we wash the bottles but here if any water drops are left in the bottle that will contaminate the entire procedure so in any step make sure there will be no presence of water if there is a water that got contaminated during the preparation of this dye at any step that is going to spoil the dye so please make sure you use clean dry bottles for the preparation of this jimsa dye clear so what is the first step first after you weigh this jimsa powder you are going to add it to a clean dry bottle followed by the addition of methanol how much you are supposed to add you are going to add 500 ml of methanol to the 7.6 grams of jimsa powder and then you are going to mix it right so after you mix well then you are going to add 500 ml of glycerol again you mix the solution now you are done with the addition of all the three ingredients now what you are supposed to do is after you mix well you keep that bottle in a water bath maintained at a temperature of 50 to 60 degrees centigrade if not you can maintain the temperature of 37 degrees centigrade and keep that bottle at that temperature for 2 hours with a frequent mixing you need to mix it in between okay after the 2 hours of time period now you are going to take out the bottle from the water bath and you are going to label it now we are going to store this bottle in a cool dark place with a firm stopper and now you are going to filter this solution with the help of wattman number no. 1 filter paper so after this step of filtration now we are going to dilute this solution with water buffer to ph 7.2 to make a working solution so this is the stock solution for thick smears you should use 1 is to 50 dilution whereas for the thin blood smears you need to use 1 is to 20 dilution now let us discuss about the procedure in detail separately for both the thick blood smears and for the thin blood smears coming to the procedure that is especially for the thin blood smears what is the dilution you are supposed to use here you need to use 1 is to 20 dilution So first you need to go with the dilution of the dye before you start the experiment. What you are supposed to do in the first step is 
first fix a dried film in absolute methanol which is an organic solvent by dipping the film briefly in a coplin jar just go with two dips right so you have to dip the film in and out into this coplin jar containing an absolute methanol right after this dipping process you are going to remove it and then let it dry after the film gets dried now we are going to add the stain not directly after the dilution only see what you are supposed to do in this step you are going to add this jimsa stain and you are going to expose that film with this dye for 20 minutes so after this step of staining you are going to wash it with the help of buffered water again in the next step let it air dry in a vertical position after it gets air dry now it's time to examine this slide under the microscope so first you go with 40x followed by the use of oil immersion lens as i told you earlier that this jimsa staining is a differential stain each cell will appear in different color so it is easy for us to differentiate the cells for example if you take wbc they appear in one color rbc appear in one color neutrophils appear in one color eosinophils appear in one color platelets appear in one color so it will be easy for us to identify a particular cell with the help of this jimsa staining method i'll give you the entire information at the end of the video now let us discuss in detail about the procedure if we are working with the thick blood smears this is all about the thin blood smears now let us discuss about the thick blood smears coming to the thick blood smears before you start the experiment first you need to dilute the jimsa stain now you need to use 1 is to 50 dilution that is you need to take 1 ml of jimsa stain and you are going to add 50 ml of water buffer to ph 7.2 that gives you 1 is to 50 dilution once you are ready with the dilution now we are going to start the experiment here as you are proceeding with thick blood smears you are supposed to allow the film to air dry thoroughly it may take several hours or sometimes overnight but please do not keep these films in incubator or do not go with heat fixing that may fix the blood smear but sometimes what happens is the rbc will be lysed so to avoid that problem please make sure you just allow the film to air dry once the film is air dry now it's time to add stain you have already prepared 1 is to 50 dilution right so now you are going to expose this film to this jimsa stain for a time period of 50 minutes first suppose if you go with the rapid diagnosis of malaria thick films can be made slightly thinner than usual that usually takes one hour for air drying after it gets air dried then you go as usual with the staining where you are going to add a jimsa stain after you dilute it with 1 is to 50 ratio and then you are going to expose it with 50 minutes of time period after this step of staining now you are supposed to wash the film for the purpose of washing again here you are going to use water buffered solution take a coplin jar filled with water buffer solution and then you are going to place that film in and out of the coplin jar which contains this buffered water for the purpose of washing the film okay do not go with the excessive washing that may decolorize the film just you go with the washing process for a time period of three to five minutes after this step of washing now you are supposed to air dry it by keeping the film in a vertical position after it gets air dried now it's time to examine under the microscope initially you go with the 40x lens and followed by using the oil immersion lens once you observe this slide under the microscope you can easily distinguish the bacterial cells cell components parasites depending upon their morphology and color i'll give you the list how they appear when you observe under the microscope This is all about the Jimsa staining. Thank you so much.